Hi friends, today we're going to talk about some really disturbing movies. Content warning, if you're here, I assume you're ready for this. And these are going to be films I haven't mentioned before. I have searched the internet high and low to really kind of ruin your day. Let's jump into some of the most disturbing films that you may have never heard of. And again, warning. The title is not a joke. Shout out to Jackie who put me onto this one. This independent drama borders on mumblecore, but with a heightened ending, I promise you'll never forget. Just stick with it. Be warned, it's a slow drama talky, but the performances are raw and hypnotizing. Starring Stanley Tucci like you've never seen him before and hope you'll never again, and Alice Eve, the entire film takes place inside an apartment. When a man shows up on his former mistress's doorstep claiming to have left his wife, she invites him in, but following him is a dark cloud of obsession. And once he's inside, he refuses to leave. And here they play an emotional game of cat and mouse, trying to put the situation in each of their favors but their connection is toxic and reaches new levels. It's an interesting look into the psychology behind the situation and what would drive someone to do such an act in such an obsessive way. Warning again, this one is conversational based, but I promise if you like slow dramas, it's only one hour and 20 minutes and it's well worth the watch for the dramatic and disturbing ending. I can't wait to read your comments once you've seen this one. You can actually watch this one on Tubi in America. In fact, I use my my VPN to do so. Another thank you to one of you guys, a huge thank you to Corey for fucking up my day with this suggestion. This movie somehow holds the most consistent disturbing tension I've ever seen in a film, which is a huge claim. From Jump, it's a waking nightmare, one you won't be able to undo, so of course you've been warned. Code to Ko is an independent Japanese film about a young mother who is struggling to survive living with a severe mental illness that makes her see double. Everyone she sees, she questions if they're the true versions of themselves or a threat. Here, she struggles to protect her son and maintain any sense of normalcy. But that's just the start, as she's approached by a strange man. If you're sensitive, please look up any content warnings in this film because at times it can be graphic and just plain traumatizing. It's a horror drama that will hit you hard because the story will play with your empathy. I don't think I've ever felt so concerned for a character in such a short time span. Within minutes, I was mesmerized by her performance and terrified at the same time. The camera movement is really free flowing with handheld zooms incorporated through some of the shots with no real style or structure. It feels almost like a documentary setting, giving it a hyper realism edge. As mentioned, the film is extremely graphic. First, it disturbs the viewer psychologically, but then its use of gore will have you scratching your skin in terror. The film is based on an original story by J-pop artist Coco, who actually plays the main character. You can rent this film across platforms, including YouTube in some countries, if you dare. Just know it will ruin your day and maybe even your year. It's very convincing and reveals the darkest sides of a battle with mental illness. Wondering why my descriptions are a little vague? I'm not mentioning every disturbing detail that happens in these movies? Well, I believe in a concept. It's called being spoiler free. Of course, there's exception to the rules, recaps when we want to deep dive into a movie, but I truly believe everyone has the right to go into a movie completely spoiler free. And in return, they get the amazing shock value that is horror and disturbing film. And to celebrate this concept, I've made Death Before Spoilers <laughs> merchandise. My new merch has dropped. It is Death Before Spoilers. You can get it in mugs, hoodies, and t-shirts. Shirts. Check it out on my website, which is spookyastronauts.com. And I also have another design up, which is no tricks, just treats. This is dedicated to my dog. Some of you guys know my dog Gromit, but also to how much us horror lovers, even though we like disturbing stuff, we all seem to absolutely adore animals and love pets. And I found that to be a huge crossover. So I wanted to do a cute Halloween themed shirt on the lead up to Halloween that combines both the spooky elements and our lovely pets. Now that that's out of the way, let's continue with ruining your day with another disturbing 
messed up movie. Let's talk about Michael Fassbender and Carey Mulligan in Shame. Directed by Steve McQueen, it's a raw first person account of a sex addict. Usually you find these kinds of characters as part of a bigger story or even a side plot in some narratives. But here we follow Brandon's life with no distractions, working and living with a sex addiction, finding out how this disperses into his everyday life, lifting the curtain and revealing the true struggles and dangers of his dependency. The film is beautiful, it's set in New York City, making use of the private struggle among a jungle of people. This movie is often described as an erotic psychological drama as we get a glimpse into Brandon's mind and his past traumas that may have caused him to turn to this unhealthy obsession with sex. This film has a soft approach to the psychological element, letting the viewer come to their own conclusions and at times this can feel more disturbing than a direct route. And also the disturbing aspect feels a lot sadder and helpless than horrific, although the ending is quite graphic. Shame is a sharp drama that leaves you feeling quite low. As simple as the name, it's a straightforward account of addiction and it's not one that's often spoken about. It feels like a taboo kind of drama that is not meant to be watched. Let's change up the atmosphere from cinematic to understated as we head to the 90s for this BBC co-produced nightmare. This is still drama and although it may look like a made-for-TV film, it's anything but your normal daytime viewing. The Cement Garden is one of those films you only find when searching the darkest corners of the internet. Based on the Ian e. McNewen novel of the same name, the film stars a young Charlotte Gunsborough and Andrew Robertson. The movie is about a seemingly normal normal family that fall apart after the sudden death of their father. Adding to this, the mother begins to lose her grip as the parent after an illness strikes, leaving the four children to fend for themselves and the older children, Julie and Jack, take over as puberty hits, resulting in damning consequences as their mental state deteriorates in their isolated home. If you've never heard of this film, you'll be surprised to know you may know one of the most famous lines. The Madonna song, What It Feels Like For A Girl, opens with a spoken word sample from the movie. Girls can wear jeans, cut their hair short, wear shirts and boots, cause it's okay to be a boy. But for a boy to look like a girl is degrading, cause you think that being a girl is degrading. But secretly, you'd love to know what it's like, wouldn't you? What it feels like for a girl. The movie explores the themes of puberty, sexual discovery, and gender. A lot is inferred, but it's still straight up taboo and it has no limits. Although it may not have all the bells and whistles of a cinematic nightmare, the content is haunting enough on its own. Thank you all so much for watching and let me know down below in the comments what is a disturbing messed up movie you think I haven't seen. I have seen a lot. I've spoken about it for nine years on this channel now so there are a lot of videos I have about disturbing films but I'm always finding gems in the comments section so leave yours down below and also let me know if you've seen any from this list and which ones you've seen and I hope you all have a fantastic day remember to stay safe stay spooky stay spoiler free if you want to be but don't ruin it for anyone else okay bye friends <laughs>